Kitty to Captain James Mr. Brown, the superintendent for the 2016 California Wing Encampment. Today, we're going to be talking about drill. We're going to be going over some basic things that I want you to be do while you're drilling your flight, feedback, teaching, and also the squad information. So while you're marching the flight, there's so many different things that you need to keep on your mind while you're going about your day. Um, you need to make sure that you're catching everything that's going on. So really make sure that you, were, uh, where you stand with your flight is you're in that far back left corner of the flight next to the last man in the first element. Um, you need to make sure that you see the entire flight in front of you. Um, so be taking that time to really work with your flight commander, maybe to split up the flight so you can really see everything. It's extremely important that you give as much feedback as you can. We're going to be going feedback over feedback a little bit later. Um, you really need to make sure that we catch everyone's mistakes because if you let a mistake go on for too long, it becomes a huge problem down the road. Um, another thing that while you're drilling, what I need to hear a lot is I need to hear a lot of Jody's. Jody's going to be a huge part of that about this encampment. I want to make sure that we're having fun because there's a certain fun motivation that we have with Jody's that gets the cadets pumped. So we want to make sure that we have we start hearing them about after about a day and a half once they start you know getting step get Jody's going because it's a huge great tool to really get them in step. It's surprising how you know they'll drown out the sound of cadence about for forever. But if you really get the Jodies going, they're able to stay in step. While drilling the flight, you need to be really conscious of your surroundings. Um, when we're marching on slow, there's going to be a lot of times where there is roads that we need to cross. Uh, so whenever you're crossing a road, make sure that you have your senior member, your TO, out in the street way before you go into the road. That's the first thing we need to pay attention to. Two, we need to make sure that we have uh, we call out our road guards about a full flight and a half in front of the, the road that we get to. So before we get there, the road guards are already in the street ready to go. So of course you call out your road, guard, road guards by saying road guards out and your flight will repeat that. So once you get the road guards in the street, cross the street, make sure that you're watching both ways and be really careful of crossing the street. Then the second you've passed the street, call your road guards in, road guards in, the flight will repeat, road guards in, they run back in. Uh, so every time that we do that, for some reason, there's always that constant piece of feedback, good job, road guards, and they keep on going. Mix it up a little bit, like good job, you need to work out, it's great that you have that positive reinforcement, but if you say the same thing over and over and over again, it's going to be, it's going to sound stupid after a while. Uh, so really make sure you work with your TO to make sure that the road is safe. So in regards for the dining hall, um, the dining hall is something that I, I want to see a little bit differently done this year. Every year we have, when we have the dining hall, we have this big old long line uh, going, out of the, going out of the mess hall. People just holding up their SOPs like this, basically doing nothing. They're sitting there acting like they're reading the book, but they aren't reading the SOP at all. Um, so what I want to see this year is when it's your squadron's turn to go into the uh, dining hall, I want the first flight to get there to directly get in line and start going in. Um, the next flight that gets there, what I want to see happen is just sort of reserve that spot in line, but don't fall out your flight because I don't want to see a huge line. There's no reason for that. With that time, what you should do is maybe just contact the flight sergeant the next flight and say, hey, we're, we're after you. Make sure we get after you. Awesome. Give them a thumbs up. And then move over to while you're in, you know, somewhere outside of that split space and be practicing drill with them. So don't just be doing the SOP reading for no, that gets nothing done practice drill, do something productive during that time. And then once that flight is completely into the mess hall, then get your flight out and get into the line at that point. Um, so once we've gotten in line, then it's the time that you can take out your SOPs and really be quizzing them because that's such a short amount of time that you know it still is effective if they have the SOPs just that amount of time while we're moving into the dining hall with just our small little flight line. Um, so work out with your flight commander this basically this thing one of you needs to go inside first because somebody needs to be done first and get outside way before all of your flight gets outside there's always that cadet for some reason in your flight that will eat super fast and then just be waiting outside we cannot have cadets our students unattended so make sure that you have somebody with your students at all times outside um, so that person needs to go first. You can alternate that. I mean, when I was a flight sergeant, I always went outside first. But then when I was a flight commander with my flight sergeant, I, you know, we alternated. But one of you needs to go out first, and then the other person stays back and quizzes with the quizzes the line while we're going in. Then that person will eat their their food and then get out uh, to the flight as soon as possible. 
If you're the one who's waiting outside with your flight, make sure that you're uh, doing drill. It's a, that's a great time to like one by one since we're just waiting outside the dining hall to be pulling people aside like, hey, what do you need to work with? And like working with them on on it hands on, reteaching things using the six step teaching method. You know, really get in there and teach them the things that they need to know. All right, now we're going to be talking about feedback and teaching. So as I said earlier, feedback is something that's really important for while you're drilling the flight. You should make sure that you're giving feedback at all times when the flight's marching down the street. So um, there's a certain way that we give feedback that is the most effective way to give feedback. And actually, the 135th First Sergeant, Chief Udd, gave me a great acronym to use for this. So he said PPSS. You identify the person, the problem, what the standard is, in the solution. So let's give an example. Uh, say you have a Cadet Jones in your flight. And Cadet Jones is having a problem with his arm swings. When he's doing his arm swings, he's flopping her all around like I bet you've seen before. Um, so at that point, what we need to do is you need to identify the person. So Cadet Jones, tell them what the problem is. Your arm swings are too wild. So make it a little bit in depth. So sometimes they'll have like they won't have enough of an arm swing. So hey, you know your arm swing isn't enough. Uh, it needs to be bigger, and then you tell them the standard. It needs to be six inches in front and three to the rear. Your elbow needs to be locked, and your hand needs to be cupped. So at that point, you explain to him what the standard is, that what it says in the CAP Manual 36-1203, exactly what it says. Um, then you give him a solution. Maybe give him an expectation. Say, hey, all right, I expect by the next time that uh, we're marching that you fix this problem, right? Or I expect that you fix it right now, even. Um, get You tell him exactly what you want to see happen. Uh, and I'll say, yes, Sergeant. And then you're going to be able to go and see him do that fix, uh, do that fixing, basically. Um, now, most of the time, once you give that feedback, they're going to maybe fix it for 30 seconds, and then they're going to mess up again. So continue with the feedback as much as you can. Um, but there's going to get to a point where they're not going to really be taking much feedback. You're going to keep on correcting them. You're going to correct them about five times, and they're still going to be messing up. At that point, what I suggest that you do is either pull them aside yourself and work on it one by one, or have your flight commander pull them aside. I think that's a great thing to do when you're focused on the entire flight. You can say, hey, you know, flight commander, come here for a second, uh, or something like that. Like, flight commander, may I ask you a question? Sir, may I ask you a question? Ma'am, may I ask you a question? And at that point, you can go over and you can say, hey, you know, Cadet Jones needs a little help with something. You do mind pulling them aside. I'll go, awesome, pull them aside, and then you can get an awesome cadet once he comes back. So as a flight sergeant, you're going to be a very important part, uh, part of teaching the student drill. It's like your main job is making sure that there will be a fantastic drilling uh, cadet once they leave encampment. So uh, in order to do that, we need to make sure that we are using the six-step teaching method. But this time, I hope that you know what the six-step teaching method is. I'm going to put up the six-step teaching me uh, method right now. Um, so if you don't, make sure that you know that as soon as possible. Um, but essentially, why it's so important to use the sick step teaching method is because it's a tried and tested way that it really teaches the cadet something. It tells them everything that they need to know. So a lot of times people sort of take a shortcut with the sick step teaching method. Maybe we'll do it once or twice and then just start teaching things as much as they can, you know, just kind of like what they think is best. Please, I urge you that this year we're going to make sure that we use the sick step teaching method every single time because it's an important way to teach the cadet and there's many different times that you can use it I mean, don't be afraid to go back and you know teach it again I've heard the excuse before oh I've already used the six-step teaching method and then like I, they didn't get it use it again try again until you get it correct because it really is a way that we can really teach them valuable information next we're going to be talking about squad formations and I want to make it clear right now I expect that we will be formed up and ready to go right when we need to start um, every year it's always been a struggle. We've always been getting there, forming up as the time has passed. I do not want to see that happen. It's your job as the flight sergeants and as the first sergeant to make sure that we get there on time or early and we form up and we're ready to go on time. Um, I suggest that you take that initiative and talk with your flight commander to make sure that uh, you know, you're practicing drill right at the spot, right at the beginning of squad information because it's very important that we start the squad information on time. All right, so right now I'm going to show up, uh, show you a in-depth picture of what the squad formation should look like, and I'm going to narrate basically what is going on during the squad formation. What you see right now is the squad formation in line. This is how all squad formations and group formations start out. What happens is the first sergeant will give the command "fall in." 
that point, the flight sergeants will do an about face and give their flight the command report. At this point, the element leaders, one by one, will uh, just salute and say, first element, all present. Now, it's very important that they aren't turning their heads towards the flight sergeants. They are looking directly forward and giving a salute. Um, so it starts out, first element, all present. Second element, all present. Third element, all present. Once it's gone all the way through, then the flight sergeants will turn around. Once all the flight sergeants have turned around, the first sergeant will give them the, then give the squadron the command uh, report. Then the first element, or the first flight, the most senior flight, let's say it's Alpha, will turn and do a salute. So they will do a full, they turn their head this time. Instead of just looking forward, they turn their head towards the first sergeant and say, uh, Alpha flight, all present or accounted for. Um, so once they give that, that they'll, they'll return their salute and drop and then it'll go down to Bravo Flight. So Bravo Flight, all present or cat for. And that will go all the way down. Um, then once that's all done, the, flight, uh, the first sergeant will give the command POST. At that point, the flight sergeants will take the most direct route to the back of the element and they'll become the last man in the last element of their flight. At that point, the first sergeant will do an about face and uh, give the squadron commander, the squadron, uh, he will say um, salutes and reports, sir or ma'am, all prisoner accounted for. At that point, the squadron commander will return his salute and the first sergeant will go directly to the back of the squadron. So they are basically in the back, um, the very farthest back spot, right behind the last man, the last element of the last flight. At this point, all the flight commanders will go to their, directly to their posts, and the squadron will continue with the formation. At that point, it could go on to a group formation, and the, they would all report into the group commander or the whole thing. Um, but in this case, for the squadron formation, this formation would end here. Anything that would be going on at this point, like uh, any rewards um, for the squadron, anything like that would go on. And then once it's done, uh, squadron commands will, you know, give the flight, uh, give the flights to their squadron, and uh, walk off. And at that point, it's completely up to the flight commander what they want to do. If they want to say flight sergeant front and center, they can. Um, if they want to just start marching, they can. It's completely up to them at that point. Um, but if your flight commander does do, um, you know, first or flight sergeant front and center, I, I strongly advise, or actually it must it must happen, is your flight must be at ease or at parade rest at least while you guys are talking up there. There's no reason to have them just stay at attention if you guys are going to have a conversation. So that concludes this video. We went over daily drill and what I expect you to be doing outside of the dining hall. We went over feedback, teaching, and a squad information. Please answer the questions your first sergeant provided for you. This is the superintendent signing off.